Settle in class, today we're learning how to make a character in Pathfinder 2e, which means it's time we learn our ABCs, ancestries, backgrounds, and classes. The school theming has never been easier. We'll be going over the choices that you need to make and broadly summarize what they are. So without further ado, you've got a character sheet with a lot of boxes that need to be filled, and I'm going to help you figure out what goes where and why it's there. You ready? Well, let's go! Now while you fill out your name and such on the top line, I need to address two things. One is that we're going ancestry, background, and class. Who you are, then what you do. However, it's perfectly fine to start out with whatever step you have the clearest idea for. Going class first is common. Two, I'm not going to be using an online builder for this like Path Builder 2e. Don't get me wrong, Path Builder 2e makes most other systems character builder look like a toy. And it's mostly free. Eat your heart out D&D Beyond. Even if you're using a physical sheet like me, it's honestly still a great tool. However, I want you to understand the steps before you let something else do the work for you. You can use a tool more effectively if you actually know what it's doing. Therefore, we start with Ancestry. Your Ancestry is basically your species. In the core book, you'll find six kinds of people. The Dwarf is a stocky and loyal moleman. Your Elf is graceful and long-lived. The Gnome is a former fae that's literally dying of boredom. Don't pretend like you don't know what a Goblin is. Your Halfling is a store-brand Hobbit. And the Human is adaptable and varied. Another 30 have been released, but we'll stick with just the these six because you're probably already familiar with them. If not, they have a brief summary at the top of their section. It gives a description, stereotypes people have about them, their usual society, the type of god and alignment they lean toward, and even your common naming conventions. These are standard traits to help you decide your character's personality and set your expectations, but most of them can be defied however you like. What isn't mutable is the powers and stats they bring. What sets you apart from other sentient creatures? Let's use the goblin for example, cause well, we're not called kobold university. First our relative size, in my case small and then our speed. Standard for a medium ancestry is 30, small is 25, but make sure to always check. We start out with a couple of languages, in my case goblin and common, but you'll get more later on if you're smart. Next up we have boosts and flaws. All of our stats are going to start at a baseline of 10. Add 2 for a boost, take 2 for a flaw. If it says free, that means you can put it wherever you want, just don't double up with something else on that step. So a goblin is dexterous and charismatic, and personally I'm intelligent, but we tend not to be very wise or observant. Most ancestries will use the 3 boost, 1 flaw method, but some use 2 boost, no flaw. Also, a new errata just came out that gives all ancestries the option of using 2 free boost with no flaw if they want to, so if you hate flaws, there you go. Finally, any special abilities are written right here. It's usually some sort of vision or natural weapon. Now that's what separates a goblin from a gnome, but what about a goblin from another goblin? That's right, letter A.5 is heritage. Different types of goblin, being half orc, sometimes even just growing up somewhere special. A heritage will give you extra powers to show just how you're different. Some goblins resist fire or cold or have fangs, or even get a tail, lucky jerks. Most of these are going to be only for your specific ancestry, but some things like half elf or tiefling can be used by anyone. But we aren't stopping there for customization. Last up we have ancestry feats. At level 1 and every 4 after, you pick a special power from the list, like improved arson or wolf writing. Some of them build into each other or require a specific heritage, so I suggest looking ahead in case there's a later feat you're just really wanting. So you're a goblin, specifically an iron gut goblin, and you know a lot of bedtime stories. But what happened next? Your background is whatever you were before the whole adventuring thing. A barber, a farmer, a gambler, whatever you were it's gonna help you now. There are 35 in your core book, 168 published overall, and all but the rarest ones follow the same formula. You get a plus two boost in two ability scores, put a check mark in that T box on two of your skills, and most importantly, you get a feat. It's a related power, like a gambler knowing how to catch a liar, or an herbalist getting to treat wounds with their skill in nature instead of medicine. There's a few books or adventures that have rare back backgrounds with their own rules, but they'll be in their own section and usually need you to work with your DM anyway, so we're not touching that today. But if you're interested in the full list, I would suggest taking a look at a site like Archives of Nethys and talking to your GM about what they allow. Once you've taken care of that though, we need to have a talk about what class you want to take. I don't mean that in the academic advisor way, although if you do want to keep learning in general, hit that sub button and come back. New video every time I make a video. That's a goblin guarantee. Anyway, I'm talking about the character class, who you are and your path of growth, from the alchemist bombs and flesh warping to the sorcerer's magical mayhem, the fighter's martial prowess to the cleric's divine wrath, whatever you're wanting to be, they've probably got an option, even if you have to open another book for some of them, like the oracle or the witch. I will cover all of them in time, but until then, just
just breeze through the class section. They all have a summary, a list of stereotypes, and different ways you might play the character, both from an RP and a mechanical perspective. Speaking of which, all throughout the classes section you'll see entire example builds in case you want to be an archer or a duelist. If you're overwhelmed by choice, start there. But before we dive into numbers, pay attention for a second. This is one of the most important parts. Pathfinder 2e tries to keep a tight power curve, and because of this an unoptimized character just picking whatever they think is cool can hit nearly as hard as a fully optimized one as long as they make the one number big. It's your key ability, it's written right there, and it even gives you a boost. Pretty much all of your powers are going to be looping back through this one number. So just make it big and you'll be fine. Now you won't get much out of buffing your charisma as a barbarian, but as long as Gronk the Chonk puts their points into Bonk, you'll be okay. Especially since Pathfinder values teamwork more than individual ability. Anyway, off on the side you'll find a list of things you're trained in. That's your proficiency. It means that when you roll for the thing, you add your level and get an extra bonus. Two for trained, four for expert, six for master, and eight for legendary. Just take off the little T-E-M-L box on your sheet, add the bonus, and move on. Next you'll see a list of class abilities and what level you get them at, or you can look at the class advancement list. Now some classes will just write these down and move on, but most of us have one more big decision, your path. It's gonna be called something cute, like research field or bloodline, but it's a choice that makes you different from others of your kind. Functionally, what this does is give you an extra ability that makes you eligible for more feats later on. Some are really basic, like more damage, or an extra type of magic, but the more powerful ones will often have a restriction called an anathema. Basically, it's something that you can't do or you lose some of your powers until you atone. The deer barbarian loses their antlers if they disrespect deer, or a god of freedom's gonna get mad if their cleric uses bind soul. Usually, they'll also have an anathema for the whole class, but don't make your druid into an oil baron and you'll be fine. But maybe none of the classes are right, or you love the alchemist and the witch, how do you pick? Easy. You don't. I'll admit this is a little advanced, but turn to page 219 and you'll find the multi-class archetype. You take your dedication feat and get basic features from another class. Then when you level, you can use your class feats to rob the other class's bind. You'll have to meet the requirement, but if you're really wanting to just mug the wizard for their arcana, be my guest. Multi-class archetypes aren't the only ones either. They've published over a hundred archetypes that you take the same way. Wrestler, time mage, zombie. If you have a very clear idea of what you want and your class just isn't quite cutting it, there's probably an archetype that'll get you the rest of the way there. Anyway, we've now done A, B, and C, so now it's time for D. Done, or decision, or don't, run while you still can't. This is where we add up everything we've got and make something out of it. But before we do, I recommend taking a moment to look back. Are we sure we want to be a witchy alchemical goblin? No shame in changing your mind. Sometimes even I lament not being a poppet or something, and I got into transmutation magic for a reason. If you're sure, then let's tally things up. You know how you've been getting plus two boosts throughout the process? Well, now you get four more. Just just don't double up or go over 18. Once you've settled on them, fill out your modifier with this chart, and with our modifiers finally in hand, we have everything we need to finish the sheet. Your HP is the number listed in your ancestry, plus the number in your class, plus your constitution modifier. You get extra languages from your ancestry equal to your int mod if it's positive. Your key is the class's key ability score. Go back and pick your feats now that you have scores for the prerequisites. Grab a few extra skills based on your intelligence, and pick out your spells from the spell section if you got them. Now the only thing left is filling out your alignment and buying equipment. Everyone gets 15 gold to start with. Go pick out your weapon, your armor, and I recommend getting the kit listed for your class. After that, just have fun shopping. As for alignment, it's lawful, neutral, or chaotic, paired with good, neutral, or evil. Write down whatever you think you are, then go talk to your GM to confirm. The game's definitions are on page 29, but the only thing that actually matters is what your specific table rules. Yes, that goes with every rule, but this is the one that's up for the most interpretation. Now, if all that sounded like a lot, well, it kinda is, but it's a lot easier than it looks once you get going. And if you want to be safe, just open up a program like Path Builder and start punching buttons. Even if it's just to grab the things you can't use, they do make things easier. But now you actually know a bit about what's going on under the hood. So if something's not lining up or you want to use a different sheet, you know what's going on. But as far as this sheet goes, we're done. I'm going to be doing a lot of episodes on Pathfinder. They're just going to take a bit because I refuse to try and teach something unless I'm very familiar. I'll ramble about ideas all day, and lore is simple enough to research. But if we're talking about something like mechanics, I really don't don't want to mislead you if possible. I'm still gonna mess up, especially if I have a time crunch. I just don't want to give you anything less than my best. Anyway, I plan on going in-depth on classes and ancestries next, and start researching my favorite part, monsters. I can't wait to start getting into episodes on encounters again, so sub if you want to be here for that, hit that like button if you liked the video, and if you're particularly inclined, you can leave a tip on my coffee. Top supporters this month are Feral Goblin and Sergeant Daniels. And now if you'll excuse me, I saw that Summoner was added, so I'm gonna do some research. And by research, I mean read through it with some rum 
in case I see things like synthesis, master summoner, or other words that hurt me in first edition. Class dismissed.